Hey friends welcome once again. Today we'll talk about PRA that is buyer representation agreement. I'll start with my own experience. I'll give you some high level details on what BRA is all about. I'll end this video by suggesting you whether you have to go with BRA whether you have to sign the BRA or you shouldn't. So the disclaimer to the video is I'm not a legal expert. So if you are offered to sign a buyer representation agreement then I would highly recommend that you go through all the details. If you don't have clarity feel free to consult a lawyer. I'm going to share what I feel about the BRA based on my experience and my understanding only. Now after I upload this video there are possibilities that there is change in the process, change in the documentation, change in the rules. So again this video is only based on my knowledge and my experience. So without further ado let's start so i'm from india and i was looking for condos in toronto canada so it was around the month of may when i received a call from a guy my friend who lives in toronto so he suggested me go through an agent it wouldn't be a problem for you guys to get a rental he only suggested me not to sign the bra if i'm going through an agent so i knew that there is something called a bra it's an agreement that will be offered to you by the agent and i have to be very careful while i'm signing it so you know that there are a lot of websites where we can go and register ourselves get an agent and start our search for a condo or an apartment so i registered to a particular website i don't want to name the website to the brokerage i don't even want to name the agent because all the buyers may not have gone through the same experience so i registered and i got an email from uh, an agent who is responsible for that particular area and i was asked what kind of condo i was looking for what was my budget by what date i would expect Uh, to move into a condo so all these details were requested and i just sent response to the agent so agent will usually set a filter and there will be automated messages suggesting certain types of condos based on your own requirements so after a few days we liked a condo we wanted to offer i contacted the agent and i mentioned to him about my interest on that condo so he said it was available and we can offer it was at this time that multiple documents were electronically sent to us for signing because we really liked that condo in the desperation of getting that condo and because we were convinced that it's a known brokerage agency and the agent is a professional agent we ended up signing all the documents and giving it to him of course the agent did not mention to us that bra was one of those documents which would put a lot of legal obligations on the buyer but at this point in time we were too desperate to get that condo and i thought getting the condo was pretty straightforward the condo was available we were okay to pay whatever was mentioned as a rental price we were okay with all the utilities that were included and excluded so i thought i'll offer it will get accepted and then we have a place to stay i did not realize that in the toronto real estate market there will be a lot of buyers who will be simultaneously offering to the same property there is a competition like situation and it's very likely that someone who's already staying in toronto and who has a really good credit score is more likely to get a property and the chances are less for an immigrant like me this i realized when the offer was rejected i knew about the credit score but i thought that a buyer with a really good salary package can be very confident of getting the property our offer was rejected and in next one or two days we liked another property when i shared a whatsapp message to the agent i didn't get a response it was 2 to 3 days and we were still not getting a response and at that point in time i wanted to make sure if i have signed a bra i went through all the documents and i realized that i had committed 90 days of time to this particular agent or brokerage through the bra it made me feel as if i am at the mercy of the agent i searched in google and i realized that if the agent is not responsive there is an option that we can call the brokerage i called the brokerage my first request to the brokerage was to end the contract obviously 3 days of no response was not something that we expected so i requested the brokerage to end the contract so that i can go to some other brokerage to some other agent but the brokerage clearly told me there is no option of ending the agreement what we can do is we can assign a new agent the next day i get a response from the agent saying he was in a place where there was no network coverage and that's the reason he couldn't respond to me by this time i couldn't offer to the second property because it was too late i was not in toronto i was in india just to make sure that i'll be able to follow up with this agent i used to be awake until around 2 am or 3 am at night even during that time i wouldn't get proper responses 
if you like most of the things in a condo you tend to compromise in a few things and you tend to offer and the offer has to go as soon as possible because it can be as simple as the earliest offer will get it not necessary but possible most of the offers that we made were already delayed and for more than a month it was not a good experience usually in most of the youtube videos when we see videos from agents or real estate agencies the bra is presented as if it's like a beautiful mutual agreement but i don't think that's the case so obviously you have to go through the entire agreement and try to understand the bra that is offered to you might be a little different from the one that i'm discussing but you'll definitely have an idea on a high level so when you sign the bra you're actually signing it and accepting that the broker has given you all the information of how it works so in my case i had no idea of how it works i wasn't even told that i'm going to sign something called a bra and there will be obligations legal obligations but by signing this agreement i will be accepting that everything is already explained to me point number 1 point number 2 when it defines buyer it is not limited to the person who is signing it now if i am the buyer the obligation is not limited to myself so it says the buyer includes you the primary person the spouse the hires and the list goes on you have an agreement with an agent with a broker and you're not happy with the service they are providing at some point in time your brother who stays with you plans to go with some other agent or uh, brokerage he finalizes on a particular property you still owe the commission to the agent if you sign the bra today maybe on the next day your friend comes up with a reference or you figure out another property from somewhere else you still have to pay the commission to the broker remember buyer ideally never pays any commission to any agent to the broker at least when it comes to the rental property but if you sign the bra and if you get the rental property from somewhere else with no help from your agent that is when you have to pay the commission to the brokerage or the agent we are also agreeing in the bra that it's okay if the agent is not able to show the property the way we wanted it so if you have a certain property in mind and if the agent in this period of time which is mostly 90 days 3 months if he is unable to show a property that you will like you're okay with that so without bra there is no obligations with bra there's a list of legal obligations wherein if you are able to acquire a rental property from somewhere else you have to pay a commission to the brokerage so according to the bra what's agent's commitment does it say that if the agent is not responsive for more than 2 days or more than 3 days the bra will not be applicable no no such obligations so basically you have this legal obligations for a particular period of time which is usually 90 days not just that 6 months after that which is termed as holdover period you are going to make sure that you are not going to deal with the properties that are already shown to you within the period of the agreement and if you go for those properties you may have to pay the commission to the agent or the brokerage so i realized about all these obligations only after i became a victim but then there are good agents when i say good agents they are professional they are ethical they are moral and they care for you as a buyer so at certain point in time when i realized that it is not going to happen i requested uh, the agent that he releases me from the agreement so the good part is the agent did not have the ill intention of uh, deliberately holding me just because i have signed the agreement so he relieved me from the agreement and then i got introduced to this amazing agent this agent is professional ethical moral very responsive she has contacts she is experienced and does a job well i have shared her name and phone number in the description so as soon as i was relieved from that agreement i got in touch with this particular agent and you won't believe i was able to confirm a very beautiful rental condo in downtown within 24 hours she had really good information on what's going on in the real estate she would have really good contacts who would give her proper information of uh, the property itself overall the experience was so smooth and the kind of image that i had developed uh, about the real estate agents in toronto she completely changed it i had signed a bra with her too for a shorter duration but that was more of a formality because we knew that we are going to have the condo so what should be the commitment from the agents before you sign a bra the agents who are professional ethical and moral they have to explain to you your obligations the intent should not be to somehow trap the buyer into the agreement it should be to make the buyer understand what he is getting into second the agent should not exploit the offer situations when a buyer likes a property it may be for lease or just to buy it it's very likely that the buyer is desperate to go for it this is the point whatever is given to you you may end up signing and some agents may try to exploit this situation which they shouldn't 
the agent should discuss the terms with the buyer. Since the buyer wouldn't know much about the agreements, the term should be discussed and it has to be customized. In case the buyer signs a BRA, the agents have to be very responsive. You may not have the legal obligations, you still have moral obligations. In the real estate market like Toronto, the offer timing is very crucial. If a buyer wants to make an offer, I think the agent should take it on a high priority and shouldn't waste any time. If the buyer is not happy with the agent, if the buyer is not happy with the brokerage, it only makes sense to relieve the buyer of the agreement. Obviously, until that particular day, the agreement will still be valid. But if the buyer is not happy with the agent, why do you want to hold on to it? Now the question is, will the agency or the brokerage company, will it sue you if you break the agreement? I feel even if you break the agreement, if the brokerage company knows that you were not happy with the service, you were not happy with the agent, you were following up and you didn't get proper responses, it's very unlikely that the brokerage company is going to sue you. The reason is they may end up getting the commission, but the news is going to spread like wildfire on the internet. No brokerage or the agency wants that. If the customer, if the buyer gives the details of what has happened, all the bad experience that he's gone through, that's not something that the brokerage would want. So I think that if the brokerage understands the customer, the buyer has broken the legal contract, but it has not been unfair. It's very unlikely that the brokerage company is going to sue you. So should you sign the BRA? Well, the good part is that's not mandatory. So you can choose to not sign a BRA and you will have agents who are okay to help you even without the BRA. But there are agents and there are brokerages who may not want to work with you without the BRA. So if you want to sign a BRA, it's okay, but always the time period of the agreement is crucial. For example, if I want condo to rent within the next 20 days, why would I sign an agreement for 90 days? It only makes sense for me to sign an agreement for next 10 days. I would want the agent to be on his toes. I would want the agent to give his or her best in those 10 days. If I don't like the agent, after the agreement is over, after 10 days, I will look for other alternatives. So updating the terms as per your situation is very, very important. Don't wait until you're going to offer to see that BRA document. As soon as you meet the agent, after the basic introduction and other important information that you share, BRA should be part of the discussion. If the broker is not going to work with you without a BRA, then you should set your terms very straight. How many days do you want to have the BRA, the term for the agreement and any other changes that you would probably want in that particular document. So this is what I feel about BRA. I personally think that the BRA is a little biased towards the agent and it will put too much of obligations on the buyer. Of course, the agents will have their own perspectives on this. And uh, I would like to know what you think about BRA. Please do let me know in the comment section below. If you really like this video and if you found it informative, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Thank you so much and see you soon in the next video. Thank you.